The Kindle Paperwhite is Amazon's most successful e-reader line of all time. The current model was launched in 2021 and is the fifth Paperwhite the company has released. With some major changes, it was also the biggest update to the Paperwhite lineup ever. Hi, I'm Khalid and today we're checking out how well the Kindle Paperwhite 5 is holding up in this long-term, in-depth review, see how the user interface has changed, why the e-reader is so popular, what the downsides are and if it's still a good choice. Before we start, I want to mention that this review is about the Kindle Paperwhite standard model. There will be a separate comparison video for the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. Sub to the channel to not miss it. So let's start. The overall design of the Kindle Paperwhite didn't change too much, but you can quickly see that the dimensions are a bit different, which has something to do with the larger screen, of course. I will come back to the specifics of the display in a moment. Since the bezels on the side and at the top are symmetrical and also smaller, the Paperwhite is actually not that much bigger than the older model. Although the new Paperwhite grew in size, it didn't get much heavier. With 205 grams, it's roughly 20 grams heavier than the previous model and weights exactly the same as the model before that. Even though that's a bit heavier than the Kindle Oasis with 188 grams, the weight is totally fine for an almost 7 inch e-reader and handling the Paperwhite is still easy and convenient. Holding it in the hand feels very similar to the previous model, which partly has something to do with it using pretty much the same materials as the previous generations. A soft touch plastic on the back, which makes handling the e-reader a pleasant experience and a flush screen at the front. What I dislike is the sensitivity of the back cover. When using the e-reader without a case, the material quickly gathers scratches and is also sensitive to fingerprints. Luckily, you don't look too often at it, but I'd recommend using a cover if you're sensitive to such things. The build quality of the Kindle Paperwhite is very nice and also on par with previous models. Other than the mentioned sensitivity of the back cover, even after almost a year of use, the device holds up well and doesn't creak or crack. One of the other changes is the use of USB-C, which has been getting more and more popular on all sorts of devices, so the Paperwhite is future-proof in this respect. So let's look at the new Kindle user interface Amazon released earlier this year, which brought a lot of changes. The first thing to notice is the heavier focus on shop content on the home screen. That was actually always a part of it, but got even more prominent on the new one. The books in the library made up roughly two thirds of the old home screen and now only less than half of it. They also changed the main navigation and moved the home and library link to the bottom of the page. I had to get used to this change, but I actually find it better than the rather subtle library link on the old software. The other big change is the overhaul of the navigation bar, which was on the upper end of the screen. They moved some items around, removed a few lines and tidied everything up. Again, that's something you need to get used to, but actually works well after some time. The new firmware makes better use of space overall. Multi-page contents now always have a scrolling bar on the side and not just a page indicator at the bottom. That certainly helps with navigating the user interface when having more content on the device. And last but not least, the library was changed as well, which is something people didn't like as much. Because Amazon removed the pure list view without covers. There is actually still a list view available, but it always shows the book covers as well, which the old one didn't. So you get less titles on the page, 5 instead of 7. I suspect it's not a big deal for most people, but having the option to still hide the book covers would have been nice. Let's talk about the ebook related functions. The library has a few different filtering and sorting options and allows to create collections, which can also be managed with Calibre with the red plugin. Audiobooks are also included in the library. Notes can be created by highlighting a word or a section of the text and then adding it with the virtual query keyboard. When creating notes, a text file is created so you can easily copy them to your computer. 
The dictionary function is among the best in the e-reading space, but it also depends on the dictionary you're using. There are over 40 explanatory and translation dictionaries available, and they tend to always find what I'm looking for. However, installing dictionaries is a bit unintuitive in my opinion. It needs to be done through downloading the dictionaries you need in the library. That's much more convenient with most other mainstream manufacturers like Pocketbook or Kobo. Amazon reworked the text styling options a couple of years ago, long before this new software was released. It allows for changes in font weight, text size, font family, and also margins and line height. If you like to change things up from book to book, you can also save your settings in your own theme to quickly switch between different stylings of your choosing. You can also install your own fonts by copying them into a dictionary on the device. There is actually a text file in the folder that explains how to do it, something I haven't noticed other manufacturers in doing. The Kindle software also offers a few other features which many competitors don't have and are rather low key and hidden from sight if you don't know what you're looking for. There is the kids mode which allows you to lock the Kindle user interface to selected functions. So for example, the shop or browser can be used. You also can track reading progress. With X-Ray, you can get additional information inside an ebook. Information on characters, places, or terms. That can be useful if you're reading more complex, character-heavy titles like Game of Thrones, for example. And with the Vocabulary Builder, you can test if you remember the words you have looked up, while WordWise helps you in understanding difficult words directly on the page without actually needing to open the dictionary. Reading PDF files on the Kindle Paperwhite is a pretty basic experience. You can use Pinch to zoom, to zoom in on a page, and use a contrast enhancement to improve readability when anti-aliasing is smoothing the text too much. And that's it, basically. So same as Kobo, Amazon is not focusing on PDF functionality. Although I have to admit, it works well for what it is. Zooming and moving the viewport around works well enough, even with more complex PDF files. But I still wouldn't recommend in getting a Kindle for mainly reading PDFs. Audible integration on Kindle isn't new, and the previous paper white had it as well. It works via Bluetooth and compatible speakers or headphones. The player is pretty simple and does its job. You can't sideload music or audiobooks like on the Kobo Libra 2 or Pocketbook era. However, something the competition doesn't have is WhisperSync for voice. If you bought an ebook and the corresponding audiobook, you can switch between the ebook and the audiobook on the fly and continue at the position you ended in either one. But that only works for compatible titles and not for every ebook or audiobook. And although an audiobook is often discounted when you already own the ebook, it's still an additional cost. Amazon set up the Matchmaker tool to check your Kindle library for WhisperSync for voice titles. See the link in the description below if you want to try it. Using the built-in Kindle ebook store is as easy as it gets on an e-reader. Because if you bought your Kindle Paperwhite on the Amazon website and chose to do so, it will be directly linked to your account. No need to log in. Just connect to your Wi-Fi and you're good to go. The shop itself is divided into Kindle ebooks and Audible audiobooks. Their recommendation system works well with your previous purchases. Something I have noticed right away is the better overall responsiveness of the new Kindle Paperwhite. Compared to the previous model, it's quicker to open ebooks or menus. It's noticeable in direct comparison, but also on its own. Even though the new Paperwhite is faster, has a larger screen and a brighter front light, I actually had no issues with battery life. But with using audiobooks more often, the e-reader will need to be recharged more often as well. So if you're using the Paperwhite to often listen to audiobooks, the Paperwhite Signature Edition might be worth a look because it has wireless charging. As mentioned in the beginning, I will do a separate video comparing the standard model and the Signature Edition soon. Let's talk about the display, which is the biggest change the Paperwhite lineup has ever seen. The display grew in size to 6.8 inches. 
it's the first time a Kindle Paperwhite got a larger screen. All previous generations have 6-inch displays. Despite the Paperwhite 5 overall not being much larger than the Paperwhite 4, the screen estate feels much more generous. That also helps in everyday use and allows for either larger text without needing to turn pages as often, or simply show more text on a page while keeping the same text size. Another big selling point of the new Paperwhite is the newer Ink Cutter 1200 technology. Even a year later, it's still the best e-paper technology on the market. Not just in theory, but also in practice. Without turning on the front light, the 300 ppi display doesn't look too different from previous generations. But with activating the inbuilt light, the Paperwhite really starts to show off. The Kindle Paperwhite lineup always had great contrast levels and readability, but this model is on the next level. Blacks look very saturated and really pop. That makes reading on the Paperwhite super comfortable. There are only two other models which can compete in terms of display quality at the moment, the Kobo Libra 2 and the Tulino Vision 6. I haven't seen any other e-readers that come close to the Paperwhite in this respect. As usual for an illuminated e-ink screen, the e-reader is front-lit. That means the LEDs are positioned in the bezel of the device and the light is scattered through a special carrier film on top of the display. The big change for the Paperwhite lineup was the introduction of color temperature adjustment, which quickly became an industry standard over the past couple of years. The Kindle Oasis had it first and this Paperwhite generation followed. Lighting quality is also great and light distribution looks very even to the naked eye. Same as the contrast levels, this might be one of the best, most uniform lighting solutions to date. So, long story short, the Kindle Paperwhite nails it regarding display quality. I always looked forward to Amazon updating the Kindle Paperwhite lineup in the past, because the newer models refined what was working well, which made the reading experience always a little better. This last time it happened, Amazon actually really surprised me, because the changes to the screen were so much bigger than in previous years. And it worked out very well because not only does the larger screen make handling the Paperwhite more comfortable, but the higher contrast levels and the color temperature adjustment make reading not only a little better, but much better. But where there's light, there's also shadow. Same as other Kindles, buying a Paperwhite means you're investing into a locked ecosystem. That means the whole user experience is geared towards you buying ebooks and audiobooks from Amazon and Audible. That of course is super easy and as convenient as it possibly can be, but somewhat locks you into the ecosystem and changing to another e-reading provider later means you usually can't carry over your ebooks or audiobooks. But of course, that's not exclusive to the Kindle Paperwhite or even Amazon. Other e-reading providers are also trying to create a similar ecosystem. That's something you simply need to keep in mind. If it's actually an issue or not depends on your buying and reading habits. If you're already using a Kindle, it usually isn't. One thing missing from the Kindle Paperwhite are page turn buttons. Many e-readers in the 7-inch segment have them. But for that you either need to have a look at the next Kindle tier in form of the Oasis or check out the Kobo Libra 2 or Pocketbook Era. The new software looks a bit tidier than older versions but sometimes also need more clicks to achieve the same results. Overall it's still very easy to use and actually offers many useful features that competitors don't have. Like the vocabulary function, kids mode, x-ray, whisper sync for voice or page flip. The bottom line is this. The current Kindle Paperwhite model is the best Paperwhite there has ever been. It brought the biggest changes to the lineup ever, which actually make a huge difference in everyday use. This is actually the first Paperwhite I recommend to anyone who is asking my opinion about it. Even people who have the previous model. If you simply want to read ebooks, occasionally want to use Audible for audiobooks and don't intend to use the e-reader for PDF files, make sure to include the Kindle Paperwhite in your e-reader shortlist. Even a year after its launch, most of the competition hasn't caught up.
Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this review useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.